Good morning. We're going to take a look at some of the aggregate function structure so we can see what we can do with aggregate functions and how we can use them to extract information and find out what we can do with them. So I've got a couple different examples right up here so we can just look at some of the basic idea. So say for example I wanted to get the passenger first names and airline information out of a reservations database. So I have select airline and passenger first name from reservations. That can be this huge giant pile of information that may not be the most useful thing. However, what if I wanted to make sure and I want to coalesce those results based on just the first name amount so matching up. So like, oh, here's all the Delta flights with person named Cody. I know. Here's all the KLM flights with the person named Sven. Here's all the Lufthansa flights with the person named Alice. So we can find all those information components pieces together by using a aggregate function and then coalescing those results using group by clauses. So if you select airline, passenger, first name, and count, as flights by name, that's going to use the ability to group those values together. So instead of getting that entire pile, I'm going to grab those discrete values that are inside that. All the airline and passenger names that match together will be coalesced together and then I get a count of that as well. So what really happens right here is I'm going to go ahead and do the front reservation table. Then I'm going to go to the group by clause and I'm going to group them by matching values. So all the discrete values that match together between airline and passenger first name, I'll put those together and then I'll count how many of those match right here, select that, and then put those together with those associated values. So that's what was really happening with that. And of course, if I forget my group by clause, I get the Oracle 00979 error, which we never want to see, not a group by function. You have to make sure we take care of that, but that's just the error that would actually happen with that. So that's why I have that there. We could also, of course, using a having on there to restrict our results based on the result of some call. In this case, where average of cost is less than 1100. Oh, cool. So we can have that with that average on there. Not the most useful query we could do there, but we can demonstrate that information by using that having clause. Now these are just some examples of just some basic ideas. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at some of these results and actually do this as something for some actual data we have access to. Since these are just hypothetical tables, let's actually go and take a look at some real results. We're going to run that same base query right here that we had earlier, just like we had the reservations table. This time we're running on the enrollment table. And so I'm going to select the section ID from enrollment. And when I just run that, I'm going to get all the different values that exist for section ID. In this case, I've got 226 rows. That's a whole bunch of information. Information. But when I use that idea to get the distinct pairs or values that exist inside that, I can do that by using the select distinct clause right here. And so by using that to set distinct, if I run that query and play that, that drops it down to 64 different values. So of those 226, there's actually only 64 unique classes that exist inside that um, enrollment table. Oh, okay, cool. So now I've got some information. And now we can use that relationship right there. We know how many distinct values exist of the um, sections. And so by taking that together, we can grab some more information now. And I'm going to get the distinct values of count and group by. I'm going to figure out how many enrollments are per class. Because if there's that many counts of that section, that's how many people are enrolled in it. Ah, yes, there we go. This is a great spot for that little meme where we have the person pointing to their head where they figure something out. Yeah. So using that same row right here, and now I have 64 same rows, that same distinct quantity of rows now, but there's actually a reason for it. We see that, oh, section 8148 has five classes. Section 149 only has one. Section 156 has eight enrollments. Oh, and so I actually have a direct relationship between those discrete values that are in the distinct value and what I get out of that by using the group by function, because I put them into groups based on the fact that they all have that section ID. So all the section IDs in 156 get grouped together, and then when they're grouped together, I use the count function to go back up and count how many rows match that, and I report that value, boom, to that specific group, 156. Oh, there's eight in that group. So that's what we're doing with that, is we're actually grouping it together, then doing the function after that so I can use the work on it. So that's how we're doing it. We're coalescing results into piles we can actually work with. And so now I can actually get information from that. We can see this by doing a little bit further with this, by taking a little bit more on those results on that. Let's do something besides simply just the count function. And let's add a second, a second function to this. And so we'll add the average on here for ridiculous because the average of student ID, that is a ridiculous value. We have no need for that. But we'll go ahead and run that anyway. And so when we run the average of student ID, I have section ID, my ridiculous column, and then my enrollment count. And so section 102 has a ridiculous average, 134, but there's only one person in it. If I go over here to section 117, I have 181.571429. I know that's divisible by seven because I know that pattern. And oh look, there's seven people in it. Yay, I can figure that out. This one ends in 0.5. Oh look, there's only two people in that. Hmm, that's a really odd coincidence that happens to divide by five or have a point half as a remainder. Yeah, I know. But we can see that we have some patterns of that. So we can see that now I'm taking that same approach right here where I'm getting those section ID, that's what I'm grouping together. And then I'm applying the two different functions I'm working within that. I add that again, I add the average one. I add a second function to that original thing right there because count, it's, it's a function, but it's, you know, it's count. 
And then we have that ridiculous, the earliest student, 134, because there's only one person. But on that average of 201, that earliest student is 141, the, the smallest student in that group. Oh, so by using the min, I can find the smallest value, which I can then make inferences or information based on the fact that I also have that average right there. So I can like, oh, there's a wide range of student numbers attached to this. And it, the fact that all these are just three digit numbers, like, oh, no big deal. But we can see there's an actual, there's a correlation now that I can see like, oh, if this is the smallest student and this is the average, here's something I can actually make some decisions about or I can make discussions about. And especially if I'm using something that's more actually like valid information, like, oh, here's the smallest price and the average price. I can like, oh, I can see the range of values maybe. Yeah, do some cool stuff with that. I can actually do some cool information with it. But this is just the idea that we can actually work with something to find something and solve that out. Now, we're gonna restrict the amount of rows we get for that by using a having clause. So we've used where clauses before to restrict the results based on some ideal cellular value, but we can use a having clause to restrict results based on that whole conglomerate value, aka function, applying that function inside the results right there. So using the having clause right here, using that same type of query we've been working with, and I'll just go ahead and select this one and hit play here. And now I'm down to 17 rows. So I do the original um, group by where I squish the results down to matching of that pattern. Then inside, once I've got that squished by results, I then apply in this case, the count function again to filter my results further where it has to count has to be greater than four. Now I filter those results out. I then do my order by using enroll count where I've taken the existing um, count. I don't want to use the, the count function as the, the sort of thing. I give it, the, I can, since it's now in the order by clause, I can actually use the named function I did in my select because it's already happened. And now I can actually use that down here in my order by and make that a lot more usable instead of having to write count again. And so I can use that to do the same thing. I can also use the having more clauses together to restrict even more results. And so we do that right here. I have my select section ID count as enroll count from enrollment where my section ID is less than 100. And then my group by, my group by has to be after the where clause. Yes, I know it executes beforehand, but that doesn't matter. Just because of the fact that it executes before, I still have to write it, uh, just because it executes before, I still have to write it after I actually do it because SQL, the language was, well, it's got some interesting features about how you organize the written structure compared to the actual execution structure. We can talk about that uh, syntax another time but we don't have access to go back in time and fix the 1970s already. We have other things we'd fix first. So if I run this query right here and I do select and I grab my lovely clauses right here and I hit play, I'm down to seven rows. So the first thing I do is I go to the table of enrollment. So I match that up. Then I go down, I group these by the section ID. So I get all the sections grouped together by what they're working on, that value I'm looking at. Then I use my having clause to restrict to only ones where the group by value returns a number greater than four on that count. Then I go up to my select, uh, my where clause, and I only want to look at um, section IDs that are less than 100. So I'm only looking at small class numbers. Then after I've finally done that, I go up to select where I identify, oh, I want to get the section ID and that count value as in roll count. So I'm going to do the count function again. I'm actually going to grab those results now. Now I'm going to go back down and I'm going to use my order by, and I'm going to organize that by in roll count and then by section ID. One thing I didn't mention earlier, when I use the group by command, it does an implicit sorting because I'm grouping all those values together. So all my 148s go together, all my 149s go together, and my 150s go together. And so when I have that right there, I have an implicit sorting automatically attached to that. And so that's a quick little review of how we can use the idea of using aggregate functions and group by to coalesce results and then do operations based off of that. I hope this is a helpful demonstration. Cheers. Have a good day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.